15 year old female came with complaints of fatigue for 2 weeks and dizziness for 1 week how do you proceed further sir uh, she is a 15 year old female uh, fatigue and dizziness are the complaints sir so me initially we have to think of uh, we have to ask other complaints like loss of weight loss of appetite uh, any history of any melina hemoptysis any history of fever right what else then uh, any history of uh, uh, cough burning mixturation associated with fever so what is in your mind when you ask these symptoms sir uh, fatigue and dizziness can be constitutional symptoms associated with the fever sir probably a viral fever it can be okay uh, loss of weight and loss of appetite in case of 2 weeks uh, uh, probably can can be related to malignancy sir okay or a state of inflammation all right chronic inflammatory disease sir for 2 weeks uh, then uh, any hemoptysis or uh, uh, melina sir which could have led to an anemia which can cause uh, that's okay okay yes. so what are the causes of fatigue basically sir causes of fatigue uh, um in case any uh, uh, cvs in case of any valvular heart disease can cause fatigue sir any oxygen insufficiency can cause fatigue sir Yes, uh, not conditions particularly. Yes. Not yes, sir. Yes. Vital stenosis, I think, can cause fatigue, sir. Yes. Any other? Uh, other than cardiac. Sir, cardiac myopathies can cause fatigue, sir. Other than other than cardiac. Other sir, system. respiratory illnesses like uh, chronic lung disease, COPD. Okay. Any yeah. other system? Sir, uh, inflammatory disorders, sir, connective tissue disorders like SLE, rheumatoid yes. arthritis. Yes, can have fatigue. Okay. Any other system? Sir, uh, GI diseases, sir, disorders of malabsorption, inflammatory bowel disease. Any uh, other system? Any other system? Hematological malignancies, anemia. Anemia. Okay. Any other system? Sir, uh, uh, any fe- acute febrile illness. Neurology. Neurologically, myasthenia gravis can have fatigue, sir. Right, that's it. And chronic fatigue syndrome. Yes, sir. Okay, chronic fatigue syndrome is another one. Yes, sir. Okay. So there are many causes for fatigue and dizziness. And do you to consider uh, hypoadrenalism is a possibility? Yes, sir. Hypopituitarism. Yes, sir. Okay. Hypothyroidism. That's right. Okay, so we have very many causes for fatigability. So you already told me certain things you want to ask to this patient. You said uh, don't this. So many things you asked so far. No. Yes, sir. What does pica indicate to you? Sir, uh, pica indicates uh, a, a desire a desire to eat a chalk wood. Uh, Iron, sir, can be seen an iron deficiency anemia, sir. Right, perverted appetite. That's okay. Okay, so yes, sir. let's go to the further details about this past history of this patient. Five years back, she had some lymph node and yes, fibra, and she was diagnosed to have Kikuchi's disease. Okay, sir. What do you think it is? Sir, uh, it is uh, necrotizing lymphadenitis, sir. Who are the candidates who get it? Sir, um, uh, patients uh, po- recovering from a viral illness, it pres- it can be a differential for a hemophil- a lymphophagocytic histiocytosis, sir. That's good. Uh, so Commonly seen in young so people. And how do they present yes, the fever and the cervical lymph node? Yes, sir. It is a pathological diagnosis that is a uh, hallmark, and 100% of them will be having lymph node enlargement in the cervical region, and okay. may be seen in around one third of the patients. And rarely, of course, arthralgia, rash, 
and so on can also occur. Hepatitis polymegaly may also occur. It is a self-limiting disease, but what is the importance of this disease? It is a close mimicker of SLE and if you are careless, some of them may turn out to be SLE later on. Is it okay? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so, some of them can go to SLE also. That's the importance of this disease. Yes, sir. Personal history. She is a non vegetarian, normal menstrual history. Okay, Family history is like this. Father is? Psoriatic arthritis. Sister is Kikuchi having Kikuchi's disease, sir. Only five years back, she also had Kikuchi's disease. Okay, sir. So, we went to the examination of this patient. And the following findings are seen. What are the important things you want to look for in this case? Sir, uh, we have to look for uh, pallor, sir. Okay. Pallor? No, she's pale. She's having pallor. So, when a, a patient is having pallor, what else you'll examine? Sir, uh, we have to ask a history of hemoptysis, melina. No. Examination, examination. Sir, needs? What for? If a uh, coil on IKEA, if it's present or not, so that uh, a chronic uh, anemia, a chronic uh, anemia can denote and deficiency predominantly can denote coil on IKEA, sir. Glossitis. Glossitis, yes. What uh, else? Then, uh, then um, uh, KF ring, sir, barely. If the patient is having pigmentation of the palms, soles, extremities, what will you suspect? Hyperpigmentation, B12 deficiency anemia, sir. B12 deficiency. Okay, this patient was pale and she was also having ictus. Yes, sir. So, what do you think it is possibly? Sir, uh, it can be a chronic liver disease, sir. Liver disease can cause uh, fatigue also, sir. And, and what, uh, what point of uh, chronic liver disease you get jaundice? Sir, cirrhosis, uh, when do you get jaundice? When cirrhosis sets in, uh, we get jaundice, sir. When the uh, uh, biliary uh, uh, clearing functions are affected, we get uh, jaundice, sir. When you, so, you think it's a primary biliary cirrhosis or secondary biliary cirrhosis? Yes, sir. Or it is a probably a uh, second, uh, secondary biliary cirrhosis, sir. Or sclerosing pharyngitis, something like that. Yes, sir. But the pallor is an important uh, complement. What will you suspect? Sir, uh, uh, any in, any chronic liver disease, uh, the RBCs are tend to get destroyed, sir. And there is extra medullary hematopoiesis, sir. There is reticulocytosis, sir. But it's not sufficient, sir. So that can itself, uh, the liver disease itself can cause uh, anemia, sir. The liver disease is well known to produce anemia, so also hypospinism may be there. Yes, there sir. are a bleed may be there. So liver disease can produce. But liver disease is expected to give you some clue in the general examination. Nails may be clubbed, there may be liver palm, there may be spiders. Yes, sir. Any so, no, such, such evidences are not there. This young yes, girl has come with uh, pallor and ictus. What else you will suspect? Uh, we can uh, suspect Wilson's disease, sir, and do a carefree examination, sir. And ask How often? How often do you see Wilson disease? Sir, okay, around 70% uh, of cases with Wilson's disease will have KF things, sir. Okay, so my question is, uh, do you consider hemolytic anemia in this patient? Sir, over two weeks fatigue uh, can consider hemolytic anemia, sir. Which is more common, hemolytic anemia or Wilson's disease? Sir, uh, hemolytic anemia is more common, sir. I think we will go by the rule of commonness. Okay, we have to suspect will be. Okay. And this patient was found to have 3 centimeters of uh, hepatomegaly and 3 okay. centimeters of splenomegaly. Hepatomegaly okay. non tender, firm liver, and splenomegaly also non tender and firm liver, firm spleen. So, okay. uh, can you come down to differential diagnosis now based upon the available findings? For a 15-year-old female with fatigue, dizziness, on examination, uh, as a pale, ictric and hepatosphenomegaly and uh, ESM grade primary area and venous hum over the neck veins, uh, which would be attributed to anemia, sir. 
hemolytic anemia could be a possibility sir hemolytic anemia is a possibility so in hemolytic anemia in general examination what other things would like to look for sir uh, jaundice sir lemon yellow jaundice icterus and ice sir then pallor uh, glossitis any history of hemoptysis melina hematuria uh, frontal bossing that's good frontal bossing which condition thalassemia sir thalassemia okay is there any particular name for that sir uh, chipmunk face is can be there sir okay okay and uh, sometimes you may sign can you get any ulcers of the skin yes sir but uh over the um, dermis we can get sir or the medial malleolus medial malleolus non non healing ulcers may be seen yes sir sometimes there may be a scar of uh, scar of uh, cholecystectomy yes sir okay so this patient got a ejection systolic murmur grade 3 how what do you say about that sir uh, ejection systolic murmur in the pulmonary area could be predominantly due to is a flow murmur due to anemia sir so how do you differentiate between a organic murmur and a functional murmur sir uh, an organic murmur uh, uh, remains uh, the same with the uh, differences in position sir good sir sir good good very good okay what else then uh, uh, a flow murmur can uh, uh, which is uh, sec- uh, disappears sir flow murmur will disappear uh, once the etiology is uh, treated sir but organic murmur can uh, might not disappear sir there are two rules two golden rules and three silver rules to be followed yes. golden rule number 1 is you look at the accompaniments of the murmur if there are okay. symptoms extra findings ecg findings and if you got some extra sounds or murmurs yes sir then you may get you may get be thinking of organic murmur number two yes, golden rule is look always at the second heart sound in yes, flow murmur second heart sound is expected to be prominent not with a normal audible split yes sir the so variation in this dampening of the second heart sound is a very important finding for organic murmur and there are three golden the three silver rules one is late systolic murmur or pan systolic murmur are usually organic that's a silver rule there may be exception and the second one is diastolic murmurs are always organic yes sir number 3 is uh, if there is a grade 4 one with the with the thrill this always almost always it is a organic murmur so all continuous murmurs are usually pathological except the venous rum yes sir so these are the important rules so functional murmurs are usually systolic but only in the ejection period if it crosses yes. midline middle of the systole with late systole or pan systolic type of murmur it is always organic yes sir and the systolic murmur of the functional murmur is commonly confined to the base of the heart and as you rightly said it changes the posture yes sir okay so it will be associated with a well heard normally split second heart sound yes sir that's how you differentiate between the functional and organic murmur and there's a venous cum what is venous cum is a venous hum is a uh, continuous uh, sound which can be heard both in the systole and diastole across the neck vein sir it indicates a high uh, cardiac output sir predominantly can be seen in a states like thyrotoxicosis beriberi anemia av fistula sir shunt sir so uh, can you define a continuous murmur sir uh, a continuous murmur is a murmur which uh, uh, Yes, bro. Starts from S1 and continues till the S2 and cont- and stays throughout the, without any change in intensity, sir. So the continuous murmur is a murmur that starts in the throat, crosses over the second sound to diastole. Yes, sir. It need not fill the throat and it need not fill the whole of diastole. Okay. So what other features of uh, venous cum? Where is it uh, usually? It's hard over the. 
jugular vein sir easily heard at the root of the neck that's yes, point number 1 it's yes, best sir. heard in the sitting position yes sir decrease on lying position and maximum heard when the head is turned to the opposite side yes sir and maximum at the time of inspiration yes sir and when you press above your stethoscope yeah. your stethoscope it obliterates the venous flow and the venous from disappears it it becomes less when the patient turns head to the same side also when the patient lies down yes sir very rarely it is palpable yes sir other causes of uh, continuous murmurs are sir uh, pda patent ductus arteriosus sir yes then uh, um a sign a rupture of sinus of valsalva aneurysm sir okay pulmonary av fistula sir right a aorta pulmonary window sir that's right and rarely mammary souffle yes sir okay so there are a couple of uh, so this patient has got this many things what is look for you, you already said because tongue gums hemolytic facies you have said lymph nodes you said bleeding manifestation you said hyperpigmented nails How do you see this bone tenderness? Sir, uh, bone tenderness. Uh, we have to uh, press a uh, press over the sternum, uh, manubrium of the sternum for five seconds, and then ask for tenderness or on the vertebra, sir, with the knuckles. No, the bone tenderness is elicited by direct percussion over the manubrium sternum. Okay, sir. With the direct percussion over the manubrium sternum, you see the tenderness. That's bone tenderness. Okay. So, how do you proceed for that? So, uh, uh, we should do a, a CBC, sir. Complete blood count, sir. Okay. So, we, we, we went for like this. It is 3 grams, not many grams. This is a typing error. Yes, sir. We got 3 grams. Paxil for cell volume is like this. Platelet count is low. And uh, total count, differential count is like normal. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, Hemoglobin is three and platelet is also less, sir. So it's probably by it's by side of anemia, sir. Anemia with the thrombocyte of anemia, sir. And then uh, MCV is high, sir. MCV is around 120, sir. So it's uh, in favor of a megaloblastic anemia, sir. Okay. Uh, what else can be caused for the macrocytes? Sir, uh, macrocytes it can be a chronic liver disease. Can cause macrocytes, sir. Hypothyroidism, sir. Or any drug intake, sir. Drugs such as phenytoin, nitrotrexate, uh, can cause any uh, antifolate drugs like trimethoprim, pentamidin, can cause uh, megaloblastic anemia, sir. Okay. And then, uh, sir. What do you expect in a case of hemolytic anemia? Sir, in a case of hemolytic anemia, MCV can be high, sir. Due to the formation of reticulocytes, sir. new reticulocytes uh, which can lead to an increased mcv sir so this is the reticulocyte how do you measure the corrected reticulocyte count so uh, corrected reticulocyte count is uh, uh, should be more than 2.2.5 is the normal level sir 0 to 2.5 so more than 2.5 indicates that the bone marrow is uh, normal sir it's uh, able to synthesize reticulocytes sir what is correct reticulocyte count sir uh, uh, for correct reticulocyte counts we have to see the number of reticulocytes in the blood stream and correct sir so you multiply it by hemoglobin and divide it by normal hemoglobin for the age of the patient yes sir so so that's how it goes yes, so so this is this was a high so this patient got anemia thrombocytopenia and peripheral smear showed large cells and more bone marrow was normal yes sir biopsy also was normal yes sir possibilities here sir b12 deficiency sir B12 was a say it is normal. 
Sir, uh, folic acid deficiency can also be there, sir. That's also normal. Sir, we have to ask any history of any blood loss, sir. If you are suspecting B12 deficiency, what is the expected peripheral smear findings? Sir, hypersegmented neutrophils, Hubble jolly bodies, uh, GABA drinks, uh, megaloblastic uh, cells, sir. I am not sure about cabotering and uh, our jolly bodies, but commonly what you see is a macro ovulocytes. Yes, sir. And what you said is right, macro polycytes. And you may find the thrombocytopenia also. Yes, Sometimes sir. Sometimes the WBs also may be less when yes, there is pancytopenia. And uh, you may find uh, anisocytosis and poikerocytosis. Yes, sir. All combinations are possible. Yes, sir. So here two possibilities you have mentioned hemolytic anemia and B12 deficiency. B12 deficiency ruled out by normal level. And so we are going for hemolytic anemia. So how do you confirm a case yes, of hemolytic anemia? Sir, we have to see uh, lactate dehydrogenase level, sir. Serum lactate dehydrogenase, sir. Okay. Then to rule out whether it what is lactic dehydrogenase? Sir, lactate dehydrogenase is an enzyme present in most of the cells and it's, uh, it is an indicator of rapid cell turnover, sir. If it's increased, uh, it indicates that uh, there is an increased cell death, sir. So, it can be seen in uh, any malignancy or it can be seen in hemolysis. Yes, sir. So, is it useful in uh, analysis of pleural effusion? Sir, uh, pleural LDH uh, uh, is... Uh, um, Using the light criteria, we can find out uh, whether the uh, type of effusion is an exudative or a transudative uh, uh, based on the LDH, sir. If the ratio is more than 60% or 0.6, that is Point. Okay. So, what next investigation to confirm it is hemolytic anemia? Other sir, than we have to peripheral smear, we have to ask, uh, sir. Uh, sir. Then uh, LDH, we have to do a direct Coombs test, sir. Before that, how to first step one is confirmation of hemolytic anemia. Step two is to find out the cause of hemolytic anemia. So, how do you confirm it's hemolytic anemia? Sir, we have to ask for a reticulocyte count. Uh, reticulocyte count and bone marrow shows there is response of the bone marrow. So, that is the excess response of the bone marrow is there. How do you confirm that hemolysis is going on? Sir, uh, Hemolysis, we have to do a haptoglobin and uh, a haptoglobin levels have to be done, sir. And we have to see urine hemoglobin urea is there or not, sir. So, you want urine hemoglobin urea or urine for urobilinogen? Sir, uh, urobilinogen, sir. It will be increased. What is haptoglobin? Sir, haptoglobin binds to the uh, heme, sir, and helps in uh, clearance of heme, sir. Okay. And what is plasma hemoglobin? Free hemoglobin in the plasma may also be elevated. Yes, sir. So, any other investigation for hemolytic anemia to confirm hemolysis? Sir, uh, we have to see leukocyte alkaline phosphatase score, sir. In, any other? What about bilirubin? Sir, uh, indirect bilirubin will be elevated, sir. Right. In this case, it was 3.5 and uh, direct was only 0.3, indirect was 3.2. So, yes, yeah. yeah, carry on, carry on. Sir, uh, indirect uh, hyperbilirubinemia is there, sir. So, hemolysis, we have to see whether it's an intravascular hemolysis or an extravascular hemolysis, sir. How do you do that? Sir, uh, we have to see haptoglobin levels, sir. Haptoglobin, if it is decreased, it goes in favor of an intravascular hemolysis, sir. So, as you, so as you said, LDH is high. We have con 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 conclusion that it is an indirect bilirubinemia. So, there is hemolytic anemia. So, B12 was also done, is found to be normal. And these are the smear, the peripheral blood. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, 
pyrocytes are there and tear drop cells are there sir uh, this can this is a picture of anisopycilocytosis sir uh, so spirocytes are commonly seen in autoimmune hemolytic anemia uh, then um, hereditary spirocytosis sir tear drop cells are uh, uh, dacrocytes uh, uh, can be seen in uh, thalassemia myelodysplastic syndromes and early stages of iron deficiency anemia sir and you wanted the uh, direct kums test also no that is comes positive yes sir what is it sir uh, so it goes in favor of uh, autoimmune etl this is like an autoimmune hemolytic anemia sir what is direct kums test sir uh, direct kums test is used to detect uh, the antibodies which are present on uh, rbc and which uh, destroy the rbc sir so so you take the patient's rbc and you can uh, mix it with the antibody and you can have agglutination yes sir okay so yes, sir. do you think there is a antibody there so you come to conclusion that this patient has got uh autoimmune hemolytic anemia sir how do you explain the low platelet count in this patient sir uh, thrombocytopenia can uh, uh, there could be an coexisting autoimmune thrombocytopenia sir also so what is event syndrome sir event syndrome is autoimmune thrombocytopenia with hemolytic anemia sir autoimmune hemolytic anemia with uh, thrombocytopenia okay fine so this patient underwent the autoimmune workup yes sir and this is how it comes sir a na elisa immunofluorescence is positive anti ds dna is positive ds dna is positive in hle sir and a na profile anti ssca antibody is positive ssca antibody can be positive in jagran sir and anti anti ama anti mitochondrial antibody m2 is positive that antibody can be positive in primary biliary cirrhosis sir so can you put a diagnosis like this yes yes sir ivan syndrome which is uh, uh, evolving into hle yes sir so tell some causes for hemolytic anemia sir autoimmune autoimmune dlg sir hle scleroderma can cause uh, hemolytic anemia sir g6pd deficiency hemoglobinopathy sir like hbs sickle cell anemia hbc uh, then uh, hereditary spirocytosis hereditary elliptocytosis and then toxins sir like fava bean which trigger g6pd deficiency clostridium perfringens can cause hemolytic anemia there can be microangiopathy hemolytic anemia also yes sir acquired genetic defects and uh, infections you know to produce eh? toxins yes. are the a bit rare things are the hyperpension all so yes, final diagnosis uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia as a presentation yes. possibly with the evans syndrome based upon the antibody you can think it is possible evolving to sld yes sir so, uh, evans syndrome you already mentioned what are types of hemolytic anemia you already mentioned in fact the causes you already mentioned here yes sir uh, uh kikuchi is already discussed tell something about the criteria sir uh, slick criteria uh, based on the uh, 11 10 cardinal symptoms sir malar rash discoid rash um arthra arthralgical symptoms arthritis arthralgia uh, serocytosis pleural effusion any uh, pericardial effusion is there or not then uh, autoimmune uh, uh, symptoms like hematological manifestations anemia thrombocytopenia uh, neurological manifestations like psychosis any antibody evidence like ana dsdna smith antigen 
and then uh, renal manifestations either it can be proteinuria or uh, hematuria proteinuria is predominant in case of lupus nephritis um then um, one or two neurological manifestations in the criteria sir uh, psychosis sir neurological psychosis sir one more uh, and then uh, vasculitis sir lupus vasculitis of the brain sir no seizures seizures sir and the renal manifestation what's the criteria sir uh, 500 mg or 3 plus proteinuria in the urine yes sir otherwise cellular cast the urine plenty that means rbc hemoglobin cast granular cast tubular cast mixer cast and so on yes sir so what are the skin manifestations sir uh, levido reticularis can occur in sle sir purpura common, common things sir sir purpura sir petechiae yes malar rash malar what's a peculiar from malar rash it's a butterfly shaped rash which occurs over the cheeks and spreads over the saddle of the nose and involves the bridge of the nose sir photosensitive any, rash sir any area of sparing sir uh, it spars the uh, lower uh, chin sir chin and mandible sir it spars the naso labial fold yes sir okay sir and what are the features of a discoid rash sir uh, it's a single rash which is a discoid sir certhematous uh, scaly scarring raised hyperkeratotic atrophic scarring yes sir and hematologically what are the manifestation one is hematic anemia thrombocytopenia sir thrombocytopenia is considered yes less than 1 hmm. less than uh, 1.5 lakhs is considered as thrombocytopenia sir now for this purpose uh, 100000 1 lakh yes sir. yes sir leukopenia is another uh, criteria yes. and uh, lymphopenia is another criteria yes sir so what is leak what the full form of sneak right is sneak systemic lupus lupus international consensus committee international collaborating clinics okay sir Sorry. collaborating clinics and how does it differ from this uh, american college of rheumatology criteria sir uh, it takes into account uh, major four criteria and minor criteria seven criteria sir the major criteria are renal proteinuria sir and ana positivity sir um, one immunological criteria and uh, one clinical criteria also included yes sir that is the one clinical and one immunological criteria yes sir it can be cumulative criteria it need not be present simultaneously yes sir if these criteria are absent even kidney biopsy is good enough provided there is positive anti anti nuclear antibody yes sir so how to proceed to treat this patient sir uh, for ivan syndrome uh, uh, we have to uh, in case of acute uh, even syndrome we have to pulse the patient sir pulse therapy with methyl prednisolone 1 gram per day for 3 days sir and then we have to switch to prednisolone 1 mg per kg body weight and we have to taper uh, prednisolone sir and uh, we have to also add an immunosuppressant like azathioprine sir uh, if, if first of all we have to stabilize the patient with steroids yes sir and bring down to minimum dose yes sir if she becomes steroid dependent then we have to go for after that bring but meanwhile you have to wait and see whether she is uh, evolving into full fledged sld yes sir the pointers here are she is having anemia hematic anemia with reticulocyte count is elevation yes sir she is having low platelet count so two things are there and then she is having positive antibodies so everything is uh, going towards uh, SLD, and it is likely that uh, she goes into full fledged SLD later on. Yes. Also, the previous history of Kikuchi's becomes relevant here. Yes. Sir. So that is an autoimmune 
background or pointer which you have to be careful about yes sir so so final diagnosis here sir autoimmune hematic anemia event syndrome do you have yes. any doubts if sir, not we we'll okay okay sir, should we do an ana sir in case of event syndrome AN is done. AN is positive. AN is positive and NADN is also positive in this patient. Yes, sir. Can AN be negative in Evans syndrome, sir? Yes, yes, very much. So, Evans syndrome means autoimmune hemolytic anemia and these antibodies are destroying the platelets also. Yes, sir. So just like, you know, it is a ITP where antibodies destroys the platelets. In yes, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, antibodies destroy the RPGs. Yes, sir. But some cases of uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, the platelets are also destroyed when you call it as Evans syndrome. Yes, sir. So, that both can be some similarities there, ITP and autoimmune hemolytic anemia, target is platelet versus the RBCs, but situations yes. are where both can be together. Yes, sir. The combination is called Evans syndrome. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We'll close it today. Thank you. Thank you, sir.